Hi everybody. Kristen and I last year went to England twice. We took two garden tours there and toured public and private gardens and we haven't had a chance to really share them with you yet so we wanted to share these with you and uh, let you kind of experience what we experienced last year. Yes, along with um, 25 uh, readers on each trip so it was a really fun experience. We hope you enjoy it. We kicked off our first trip in July at the Hampton Court Palace yeah. Garden Festival. Oh my gosh, it was so inspiring. There were all these different um, displays yes. from uh, garden designers of such inspiring and unique, um, just different displays, yeah. lots of different flowers yeah. and, and you know. In July just, it looked great. Oh yeah. And then that floral marquee building with all the oh, plant material. Yeah. I mean, all just displayed alliums, everything you asked for, you yeah. could see. I don't think I've ever seen as many no, I varieties. Took so many of, photos that, that day. Yeah, 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 there was a lot to see there. And then, yeah. of course, you know, if we could have shopped, and if I had, uh, you know, four bags to bring home, yeah, for I could sure, have filled them up. Sure. <laughs> yeah. It was a lot of fun. And, and we saw a lot of stuff that we don't see back here. That's true. That's unique yeah. to um, the UK. So it was really fascinating. Yeah. Well, and it was just so cool to experience that um, day. Um, you know, it was just thousands and thousands of people on, I don't know, something like 30 some acres yeah. of, of ground in this historic uh, palace. Yeah. And uh, it was just all garden lovers. So it's yeah, just not so that passionate. often that you're around yeah. that many people yeah. who love right. gardening as right. much as you do. So it was all garden. Exactly. It was just great. But um, the thing I'm really also super excited about is that in May of this year, we're going to Chelsea, wow. which is yeah. the Chelsea Flower Show. So that uh, is also a bucket list event and it should be um, very similar to the exactly. Hampton Court um, Palace yeah. show. Uh, it's just it's just iconic. Yeah. So we're excited. Exactly. So our first garden on that first trip was the iconic Sissinghurst. Yeah. And it was just amazing. What a way to, to start. To pull up there and everyone got off the bus and it was kind of a new prairie out there by the parking lot, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, we walked up and the tower, you could just see it. Yeah, you walk yeah. right through the... Yeah, I mean right that's the first entry. place I went just to get the lay of the land, go up in the tower so you could look around and see the different gardens. See all the garden rooms yeah. that were laid out originally yeah. um, by Vita Sackville West. Correct. And the famous white garden, so beautiful. Yeah. That's just iconic, of course. Oh, it's, and, and the, just the plant combinations and the beds yeah. I, I mean, yeah. and the colors, it was just, it was great. And then that the new garden we got yeah, to see. Yeah, the Delos yeah. Garden, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that was something that was started by them, but they never yeah. really found it to be successful. Right. And then um, in recent years, it's been revamped and redone. Yeah. And so this in their, in their of, vision. Yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah exactly. with their, kind of with their vision in mind. So this Mediterranean, yeah. beautiful Mediterranean garden. Yeah. But um, I love all the, the reseeding annuals throughout the garden. Yeah. And it kind of, um, you know, it's just that classic sort of cottage style, uh, arts and crafts yeah. movement era. And uh, I think her, her um, philosophy on planting was cram, cram, cram. And you can right. totally see yeah. that everything, you know, there right. was just everything growing together. It was so beautiful. And I'm really excited to see it. You know, yeah. we saw it in July yeah. uh, last year, and now we're going back to that same garden in May. So I'm yeah. super excited to see, you know, right. when the roses are just at their first bloom. And well, um, um, also, you know, talking about her vision, I mean, we got to see Long Barn, which was like her first garden, yes, and that's yes. also on the trip that's coming it up is, this year it too. It is, and that was so, really fun to see how they sort of started their yeah, design philosophy. It was like philosophy. their starter garden, Long yeah. Barn was, <laughs> what right? What a great place yeah. to start. Yeah. But, you know, beautiful borders there, and then they took all that information yeah. and applied it so to So you could see, to yeah, you could see yeah. the similarities and yeah. the... And the inspiration there so and the nice sure. thing at long barn is that we get to speak with the garden owner yeah um it's a private home and so you can only visit by appointment and yes. have tea and cake in the garden oh, yeah. Yeah. and have her tell stories about right. all the research she's done about vita and yeah. harold and also well, just kind of talk about the property we're so time. passionate about it and and yeah. knowing the story and trying to keep it alive yeah and it's, it's really it's really great it is cool Another great um, iconic garden that we got to visit last summer was uh, Great Dixter, oh, which yeah. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of and um, probably seen photos of. Uh, Christopher Lloyd uh, is, the, is the person who established this garden in the early 20th century, and he lived there until uh, well into his 90s and when he passed away and left this garden, mm -hmm. um, it, but it's still 
um, maintained in the same style yes. um, under which it was established, which was sort of groundbreaking at the time. Yeah. And uh, again, I mean, just exuberant, exuberant plantings. So full. Yeah. I mean, it's just so thick of plantings right. everywhere in the color. Yeah. Right, yes, very much so. And yeah. I, I think it's all, um, and also the, the wildflower meadow kind of approach yeah. is something that was sort of groundbreaking Correct. Um, when they established it many yeah. years ago. And mm -hmm. then it's all sort of against this medieval um, structure w in the house and we got to tour the house as well which was really um, interesting yeah. and then uh, all these beautiful hedges that are pruned in such whimsical ways so yeah. it seems like it could be a very serious place but actually there are these undulating hedges yeah. and whimsically in trained one part topiaries. Of the garden, and you yeah. walk to another part of the garden and it's just so tight and compact with yeah. all those plantings just, but then it's more loose and yeah it's really more, beautiful yeah, it is. yeah and so we're excited to see that again in may actually this yeah, year as well right. so we can see it in a different season and you know on these trips with these people we're traveling with 20 25 people mm -hmm. that are all garden lovers so we get back on the bus mm. after the tr after viewing these gardens and Everyone talks about what their favorite part of it was. Did you right. see this? Did you see that? Yes. So that, that's what's so great to that's be able true. to talk about it. And yeah. remember how excited people were every day before we yeah. got to some of these gardens that they they knew yes. they'd heard of. Um, yeah. Even the Hampton Court, you know, and Great Dixter and Sissinghurst, people, it was just sort of like electric yeah. on the bus. Oh, Everyone yeah. was so excited so, to yeah. see these places. Giddy to see it, so, for sure. yeah, yeah. Another must see garden in England that we went to last year and we're going to go to this year yeah. is Whistley. Yes, the Royal Horticulture Society yes. Display Gardens. Yes. Yes. So it's a large public garden, mm -hmm. and it, I mean, it has everything, oh, really. Anything you can picture, if yeah. you just imagine, is there, yeah. I know some of the people that were on the tour last year, that, that's the one place that they wanted to go. Yeah, right? that's true, so. yeah. Well, it's just all these demonstration gardens. You know, the rock garden is beautiful. My that was my favorite part. Yeah, yeah. I love that. It was, yeah. it was beautiful. And then sort of this, um, you probably have seen the photos of the iconic sort of water garden with yep. the water lilies in front of the beautiful yeah. structure um, and then there's um, borders designed by Pete Udolf yeah. which, you know, they're, just, they're, they're so pretty. long and the borders are so deep too yeah. that you know you don't see that so much here either yeah. how deep the borders are it's just right. plants you know yeah that's true yeah yeah but um, I mean just dis and then and then um, collections of almost anything you can picture I Correct. saw beautiful rose garden and dahlia gardens and sweet peas I've never smelled Right. Such so many sweet right. peas before. Yeah. It was it was really exactly. it was really fun. You may have also seen the famous red borders at Hidcott, which uh, were this garden was designed by Lawrence Johnston, an American actually, um, early mm -hmm. in the 20th century. And uh, these gardens are full of just different garden rooms, mm -hmm. yeah. each with its own sort of character and design style. And, yeah, and uh, there were like palette. passageways, like from one yeah. garden to the next. And yeah. I think we hit that the red border at its peak in September last year. So it was just yeah. spectacular. All red flowers, yep. red foliage. Yeah, yep. it was really beautiful. So most of the gardens that we've talked about so far mm -hmm. have been were designed in the 20th century, right. but there's mm -hmm. a whole group of gardens in England that were designed before that. Years and, and years and years yeah, before that. Yeah, that are open to the public. Right, yeah. And, and so... So including Stourhead, yeah. which is one we visited in September, and it's about 250 years old, the garden is, and it's... Um, it's sort of built, it's designed in the English landscape style, a more naturalistic style yeah. of garden, and it's all about views and vistas and um, sort of landscape features and trees and shrubs. And so there's beautiful water, a man-made lake with um, bridges and ruins and a grotto and yeah. just all kinds of yeah. sort of magical things to explore. Another old garden on our tour was Parham House, mm, right? Yeah. Um, I think it's the best surviving example of Elizabethan architecture in England. The home is, yeah. The home is, a, which yeah. we toured and yeah. it was fantastic, yeah, right? Yeah, it really was. But the walled garden, a four acre walled garden, yeah. long Eight, borders, huh? 18th century. Yeah. Yeah, also very old <laughs> um, and beautiful. Rose garden, cut flower garden. I yeah. mean, lots to see. They're so there. great. Lots to see, yeah. a lot, of, lot to photograph. Yeah. Sudley Castle was another stop yes. where there was so much history. Yeah. And uh, this was a castle that uh, Catherine Parr retired to after uh, Henry VIII died. And mm -hmm. that's where she died, actually, mm -hmm. and is buried. And so there are a lot of um, interesting ruins there. Oh, There's yeah, a connection to um, Queen Elizabeth, the yeah. uh, first. The first. Yeah. Uh, there's um, all kinds of beautiful newer um, flower borders and rose collection and borders yeah. and uh, just a lot to see there.
Yes, it's not as well known as some other gardens, so mm -hmm. I think people came away really surprised. Yeah, it and was they, fun. Yeah, and to be able to tour really the church stop. and the castle. And, yeah, yeah it there was, was a lot there. Eiford Manor was another really yes. um, big treat on this uh, in, in our tours last summer. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that made it so interesting was that we got a personal tour from the owner of the property, yes. William, and the stories that he told yeah. <laughs> made it um, even even more enjoyable than just um, absorbing yeah. the beautiful views and interesting right. interesting landscape there. Yeah, I mean, he had so many stories to tell. Yeah. Um, it was a garden designed by Harold Pito. Yep, in the, and, 20, in yep. the 20th century, yep. yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. and it's just a very eclectic garden, a lot of influences there. Yeah, um, from his that, travels, and yeah. he'd done a lot of traveling in Italy, and Correct. brought all these things back and established this garden. Yeah, yeah. And, and William was a real scholar of the yeah. property and the history of it, so you know, he really took his time Time and, and explained everyone on the tour just was yeah loved um, it loved it yeah. yeah and then we had a great lunch at their restaurant after yeah it was lovely another stop was Kifsgate Court which has a rich history with three generations all of women. women yes I all love women. that yeah yeah and uh, that's but, really interesting and also it's on a hillside very much yes. like Eiford Manor but designed in a completely different yeah. way two and water style. features a very modern water feature yeah and then one with that just has a spectacular oh, view of the countryside that view I think everyone paused there for quite a while yeah. to, we took a lot of photos there yeah <laughs> at Denman's we got to see a more modern approach to gardening yes. this is the garden of um, John a really Brooks. yeah John Brooks yep. a very well-known garden designer especially um, mm -hmm in the last um, few decades right. and uh, before he died this was his garden he lived on and the property yeah he right? lived on the property yep. and gardened here and so it was a much more modern approach where there's a lot of sort of gravel yeah. pathways and hardscaping moving throughout the property yeah uh, he established he liked uh, a blue for oh, benches Den Denman's and blue yeah, yeah so it benches, was kind of yeah, yeah it became i know it had a real place. california feel it a part did. of that garden. It did, you know, really, didn't it? With the yeah. gravel and... Very modern and casual. Yeah. yeah. And it had a garden shop that people could yeah. look around and... Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Another public garden we stopped at was Sussex Prairie. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a garden shop, but it's also a nursery to extend... An event center. Event center. Mm -hmm. But it's eight acres, I think, Yeah, right? I think and that's 30, right. 30,000 plants. <laughs> yeah. and Paul and Pauline McBride, um, and they used to work for Pete. Rudolph, Rudolph who, yes, uh -huh. and, they, and they started this garden in England. Yep. And um, Pauline, I think about huh? fifteen years ago, yeah, maybe they planted ago, it. Mm -hmm. And um, Pauline gave us a brief description of how the garden started. She was such a great tour guide, so yeah. colorful and, and fun. And she brought all her friends in, yep. and they planted all these plants like yeah. over a week or something like that. Right. Yeah. It's a great yeah. story. She just tells a great story well, about it. And the other fascinating thing about that is, at the end of the year. They burn. They a lot do. Of their yes, they burn it down. Plant material. Burn yeah. It down. Yep. So interesting story, just to hear about how it was established, and yeah. then also how it's t how it's cared for. But yeah. also, um, we saw it at a really great time in the summer when so many perennials and grasses, and right. it's just full of movement and yeah, color so and pollinators. There and you can and, walk oh. around and get yeah. long vistas of these borders. And yeah. you know, when you hear a like as Americans, you hear prairie and you have something in your head of what a prairie's going to look <laughs> yeah. like. It really wasn't like an American prairie. <laughs> no, not no. quite. But a lot of the same plants and yeah. still just a you know beautiful, yeah. beautiful place to be. When we were putting together the itinerary on these trips, we tried to get a combination of public and private gardens. Right. And yeah. so we toured a lot of private gardens. Um, and we were the only ones in these gardens. Yeah. We oftentimes met the owners and the designers, and they gave us a talk or presentation. Yeah, it and was interesting. the history interesting. of the garden. It was very and, interesting. And you could ask questions yeah. and, and kind of get their techniques and tips on how they care for certain plants or, yeah. you know, what their challenges are, how they deal with, you know, different yeah. challenges. And uh, so it was interesting. One of the gardens was, uh, one of the newest gardens we saw yes. was Brightling Down. Mm -hmm. And this was a garden that has all kinds of interesting features to it, including a woodland walk and a walled vegetable garden and this really beautiful pond where I actually yeah. got to see Gunnera up close and personal oh, for the huge. very first time. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't that was, realize they were so spiky and yeah. the flowers were down. I mean, there was so they much to learn about that. Of those. It was yeah, amazing. it was really yeah. beautiful and an Asian inspired um, so well area. Done. Yeah. yeah, so um, that was just really fun. And in all cases, yeah. I think you're right, just getting to have um, interactions and with the owners. The owner greeted us and, and the, the gardener. And yeah, the yeah, yeah. Talked to really us about great. their vegetable gardens. Sure. Yep, very interesting. At St. Timothy's, we got to see a garden that was voted the England's favorite garden a couple of years ago Correct. in the National Garden yeah. Scheme. 
and uh, it's a newer garden. And, yeah, 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 maybe and, ten or fifteen years old. And Sarah Pashwani, the owner, yeah. mm -hmm. who gave us a lecture. I mean, a slideshow <laughs> yeah. and the history before and after. I mean, she's a new gardener too, but yeah. she was just oh. so passionate, and she just dove in and yeah, you know really shows. wants to make that a destination. Yeah, there's so yeah. many pretty borders and wildlife um, plantings and. Uh, a boxwood parterre, I believe, was there. Yes. And, yep. um, yeah, and again, you know, Sarah made cake and tea, and, yeah. <laughs> and we got to, well, that, you know, enjoy yeah. that with her and her Like husband. she had lavender water, or what was yeah. that? Something, it was just like, yeah, yeah so fun. Really. It was really, it was a fun Well, time. that's the thing about these trips and, and these some of these gardens in England, they're set up for, to receive guests. So, yeah. you know, like 25 people, and they, they're used to it. So, when, you know, our co coach rolls in and 25 people come off, they're ready for us and they've got space for us. Yeah. That's what's really cool it on these really tours. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Another private garden was Pettifer's, which is, I think, considered a townhouse garden. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which was different. And, um, but it, it was one of my favorites on either trip. It I, really was. It was I so fascinating. Was. The owner yeah. was gone, but the, the gardener met us and greeted us and talked about the garden and the history of the garden and such mm -hmm. such innovative plant combinations there. And, yeah. Just yeah. beautiful think, colors. And yeah. um, just and it, there was so much going on. I think so many Gina, beautiful Gina colors. Price. Um, started that garden in 1990, and I think she was a Similar. novice gardener too. Yeah, I but, think you're right. But it's just uh, yeah, so colorful. Yeah. yeah. Of course, the gardens were all just beautiful on these trips, yes. but I don't think the trip would have been as memorable or as enjoyable without being able to have that experience yeah. with a group of other people who yeah. loved gardening just as yeah. much as I do. Because every night we'd get together for dinner and we could talk about the gardens yeah. that we just saw. And also, you know, we learned about each other's gardens and yeah. we showed, shared photos of our gardens with right. each other. And there was lots of phone pic sharing yeah, going on exactly. on the bus between, yeah. between gardens. And yeah. uh, I mean, I know some people have even gotten to Together after the trip, yes, right, um, because they made friends back and, in the states. Yeah, yeah. yeah so they, once they're home, now they're connecting as well. Yep. And I mean, I we've stayed in contact with a lot of people on these trips. Yeah. It's just, it was so fun to get to know people yeah. and then to have these really memorable experiences together. I just can't wait yeah. uh, because we're, we're doing we have it some again. More and some and some that went last year are going to come back and That's tour right. with us this year too. <laughs> so they had yeah. so much fun last year um, that they're coming back. So we're going to go. To Chelsea in England in May. In May, yes. And then we're going to go to Ireland in Bloom. That's in July. In July, yep. yeah. So we'll be visiting the Dublin area and then heading down toward um, Cork and visiting yep. a lot of gardens there. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, lots of lush plantings and really friendly. I'm yep. expecting, I can't wait to meet the gardeners in Ireland. Yeah. And then August, we go to Normandy yes. and Monet's uh -huh. Garden and um, along the coast there. It should be so fascinating. It really should. Yep. And there's so much history. So yeah. Monet is kind of, that's a newer garden. Yeah. But then all these medieval villages and yeah. beautiful, you know, just I, I think there'll be centuries and centuries of garden design that you'll yeah. be looking, you know, that we'll be looking at. So we're really excited about these uh, tours in 2023. Yeah.